Last night, State of the State. Did you stay up? Did you watch it? Uh, I have to admit, there are uh, most people I talk to after one of these, whether it's State of the State or State of the Union, I, I struggle to find people who watch the whole thing. And my friend Steve, I, I, last year, I said, why don't you watch the whole thing? <laughs> because I know guys like you are going to tell me about it, Mike. You're going to have some people on to tell me about it. Well, let's do that. John Selleck joins us from Har- Harbor Strategic, who did watch and uh, may have even been there. Hey, John, good morning. Hey, good morning, Mike. Yeah, I sure did. I was on a pundit panel last night over at the Kelly Cawthorn lobby firm downtown across from the Capitol. And while these things won't be on Netflix anytime soon, they do tend to have an impact on what's going to happen uh, with our public policy. So we try to pay attention a little bit and then see how the legislature responds. Well, we know in front of these speeches pretty much what's to be said. Was there any sh- anything not shocking, but any anything that came out last night you went, oh, oh, OK, that raised your eyebrows at all? No, there really wasn't. Um, and the reason for that is probably like fairly good strategy there by the by the Democrats. You know, last year they were very successful in the election. Uh, they knew that inflation was supposed to kill them, that Joe Biden was supposed to kill them. So they focused really hard on saying that they would address basic kitchen table issues, as the governor calls them, to get money back in people's pockets. So you suddenly have Democrats talking about tax cuts, right? It kind of turned the world on its head. Uh, we had a, a new member of Congress from West Michigan, Hillary Scolton, who put right on the screen the words Democrat should stop the spending, and she's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when we saw the governor lead off with those tax cuts um, and the preschool issues yesterday, because it's just going to basically find a way to put a bunch of money back in people's pockets. Uh, and she was wise to stick to that. It's what worked last year and, and may work for them again this year. Yeah, it was a big one. Tax relief, the pre-K, that was a, a, a big thing. We had Graham Filler on with us earlier this hour. He said the devil is in the details, though, because you can give uh, uh, you know the blanket statement. Not that you're going to get into a lot of details in the state of the state, but now that the, the now here comes the the work, doesn't it? The the details have to be worked out, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. And that's you know probably one of the annual criticisms of either side, either governor that gives one of these speeches is where's the details, where's the meat. And that's not really what these speeches are for. Uh, It's a -a once-a-year opportunity that actually is enshrined in our Constitution for the governor to be able to walk into the legislature, bring everybody together, and say, here's my vision for what I want to do. And, Mike, we'll start to see the details, I assume, in two different ways. Um, February 8th is when the governor is going to give her budget presentation. That's when she actually has to lay out, here's the spending I'm going to put behind things like universal pre-K, tax cuts, where she's going to lay down the first marker against the Republicans and say, all right, here's what I propose to do on um, senior tax relief and working families tax relief. What's your plan? And they'll start the debate on those things. So we've got a couple weeks until we see those details rolled out. And the second way, some of these things have to be done with straight-up separate legislation. In my guess is from a PR perspective, when you have something you think is a good thing, you don't put all of the details at once. You milk it out a little bit. So we had the initial announcement on some things last night. Then we'll see some individual press conferences over the next few weeks, I'm guessing, about legislation that would theoretically enact these issues she talked about last night. One of these biggest battles you see coming as, uh, I think, even on a national level, but especially also now here in Michigan, gun control? Yeah, huge, huge issue. Um, Most definitely um, something that's been on the radar for Michigan for quite a while, but with the school shooting uh, at Oxford High School, uh, it really put Michigan at the center of a lot of these things. We're, we're seeing them on the news every day. And so the pollsters uh, have gone out and talked to people several times about this. And normally I presented this issue from either you're on your full freedom and protecting Second Amendment rights or you're for the government taking over everything. And is there any middle ground? And when the pollsters in the Detroit News and Free Press, not that they can't make a mistake, but they both kind of came to the same conclusions that when they talked to people starting in the middle and working somewhat out towards the edges, there was massive support with some basic gun safety things like safe storage laws and universal background checks. It gets a lot thicker when it comes to the uh, the so-called red flag laws. That is going to be a major flashpoint. Now, I mentioned there's a lot of polling support and a a wide group of people that clearly would support some kind of movement on that. They don't know what the details are, but they they like the concept. But that is going to be one of the the full-on brawls. I don't think the governor is going to seek to lead with that. She wants to be able to knock some things out, put some check marks on her to do with the show, not only Michigan voters, but we know that the national media is watching 
uh, Gretchen Whitmer. He, if she's in charge and she has democratic control of all parts of government, what can she get done? Is she, would she be better at being president than Joe Biden uh, or better at leading the legislature uh, than um, Joe Biden? So she's trying to accomplish some things on two levels for two groups of people watching. And, you know, the knockout of things where there's some agreement, like uh, tax cuts and school spending, is more likely where we'll see her lead off. Do you, John, think, and we're talking with John Selleck from uh, Harbor Strategic Public Affairs, uh, and Harbor Strategic is, I mean, they're in Detroit, they're in Grand Rapids, uh, Washington. It's it really, it's a, a bipartisan uh, look at things is what they try to do. And do you think Gretchen Whitmer is, I don't want to say being groomed, but I know she's being looked at as a presidential candidate? Yes, I really do. Um, I think there's a lot of Democrats are really concerned about Joe Biden. I mean, he does completely fit the mold of that old question of uh, is that some a guy you'd want to have a beer with? I think it'd be a blast to have a beer with Joe Biden. But um, being president is a tough job, um, and we have had a government run by very old people for a while now. Um, but he keeps bumping into problems. He kind of had a smooth run after the, the victory in the elections. He got some credit for. I'm not sure that should be the case. Um, and he had some things kind of going his way, and then boom, he trips into the document crisis and trips that whole thing off. So I think Democrats are watching very closely. Uh, is there someone else that could fill that role? And when you read all the, the D.C. pundit articles, and they say, who could be next? They look at senators, they look at governors. And Governor Wimmer's right up there on that list. She's from a purple state. She's from the Midwest. She's really well-spoken. She's a great political talent. All the kind of things you would need at least be credible getting in. And in this last election, she showed she's got a lot of the connections on fundraising that you would need to go find if you're going to pick up a month for president. Oh, yeah. The issue is time, you know, Mike. Um, the clock's ticking to be able to be ready to run for president. Uh, and if, the, if President Biden doesn't step out of the way soon, it'll be really hard for someone else to run. So I think um, we'll have to wait and see on that. Yeah, I almost, uh, not getting away from the state of the state last night, but uh, I almost think on a national level, I'd be interested in your take on this. It seems to me sometimes, it, it seems to me lately anyway, people are, are kind of looking past 2024 already at 2028. I mean, you from DeSantis and now Governor Whitmer, and you're going, well, maybe not now, but what 2028 is going to be a big raucous one. Watch out. But we still got to get past 2024 here. I don't know. Um, wait, by the way, any idea when uh, is when and if Joe Biden is going to announce? When is it going to be? Well, I think in his mind, he's already doing it, uh, and he's probably itching to announce it. Uh, even presidents will have to set up their campaign infrastructure, get their ducks in a row before they make those kind of an announcement. And they have to make sure that they've got all the main Democrats behind him. Uh, if for some reason... Um, we saw some major Democrats raise questions out there. That wouldn't be yeah. good for him. You want that taken care of. You know, and he gave them, he kicked the door open for several Democrats to question him once this document crisis came up. Even Debbie Stabenow was on Meet the Press and had to say how embarrassing this is for the president. I think it goes beyond embarrassing, but nonetheless, you have such a loyal Democrat having to question the president, as did a lot of other Democrats on all the national shows. It shows there's sort of a an urge there to kick the tires and see if they can push him out or at least really put him under the, the spotlight so it allows two people to stand out on his own. Hmm. I guess it's still going to be the nominee. He's the strongest candidate uh, right out of the box for the Democrats. And I, you know, one thing, he wants to be president, and that, that's probably the determining factor. All right. Jen, I want to have coffee with you sometime because this is you're an interesting cat, and uh, and uh, we'll do that. The devil is in the details, though, from last night. We will see moving forward after the state of the state. John Selleck from Harbor Strategic is with us. By the way, I know that you, sir, from when you were president of the senior class in high school, have some documents someplace in a shoebox, <laughs> and I will be. <laughs> Everybody's got documents, don't they? Don't we all have secret documents? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, man. All right, John. Hey, have a marvelous day. Thanks a lot for coming on your morning wake up. You too. Thank you. See you, buddy. John Sully. Yeah, he's a good cat. Harbor Strategic. They do, I like it. You know, groups that uh, analyze stuff from both sides. You know, he's uh, analyzing it from either side. They're bipartisan stuff. On 1320 WILS.